Greetings friends and brethren around the world. The world we live in, the civilization we live in, has changed in dramatic ways over the past three or four decades. Some of that change came about with the development the of the microchip. Power. That led to the invention of the personal computer, then the internet and the mobile smartphone. Paired with global communication satellites, our world has virtually shrunk from a vast planet with unknown corners cut off by distance to something more like a little village. The miniaturization of digital technology and the introduction of high-speed communications and search software all built into a handheld mobile device, untethered, that you can carry anywhere has been nothing short of phenomenal. Today that little instrument in your hand, whether it's an iPhone or an Android, it has become a mini super computer with almost instant access to much of the world's knowledge as well as a video communicator. We have the ability to talk to someone thousands of miles across the earth and see the person face to face. This digital age is certainly amazing and truly marvelous. It brings to mind the latter half of the scripture in Daniel chapter 12 verse 4. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. And it has. It's happened. Unfortunately, as it is with man, there comes with all this marvelous, incredible technology, a society where far too many have become indifferent to life, bored, lacking a real work ethic, or just too interested in just being mindlessly entertained with this and that. Many people have lost self-restraint with their morals, cruelty, lying, Self-obsession, sexual promiscuity abounds in our world. So much so that in our casual hookup and search culture, sex leads to many unwanted pregnancies. In America alone, over 3 million unplanned pregnancies occur each year. Of course, the media uses the term unintended pregnancies. However, unintended or not, it still leads to 1.5 million abortions each year. How shocking is that? Let me repeat. Over 3 million unplanned pregnancies occur in America, which leads to 1.5 million abortions in America. Please go and Google those facts for yourself. On the one hand, we live in an incredible digital world, undreamed of just 50 years ago. With all the incredible advancements in technology, and you know what comes with it? You know what comes, brethren, friends? Many thousands of women and men see the unborn child as unnecessary human chattel, which can be gotten rid of when it's inconvenient. A thing to extract like a rotten tooth. It's like removing that rotten tooth. In many abortions, the unborn child, the fetus, screams with pain. Go and check the facts. While well, being ripped to pieces during an abortion procedure. Let me ask, does mankind, that is male and female, understand what human life is all about? Again, does this age we live in know why a man and woman have the wonderful and marvelous ability to reproduce? Why a woman has the astounding ability to give life and produce a child? A whole new human being? If we really knew, if we really understood why mankind, then we want, would understand why we were born. Of course, the truth about why there is human life and what its incredible potential is, is bound to raise some provocative arguments from both religious and legal experts. However, regardless of their acrimony or their disdain for the unborn, I will explain why God, yes, the living and almighty God, created human beings, both male and female. 
I'm not concerned about whether physicians, lawyers, legislators or parents disagree. Abortion is the result of a society that has become indifferent to human life through its self-centered, promiscuous and immoral behavior. So once again, let me ask you, do you know why humanity exists? Do you really know? And to what source should you go to get the true facts? Well, the only true source about the creation of mankind comes from the God of the Bible, all atheists and evolutionists notwithstanding. On Friday, the 24th of January, the President of the United States, Mr. Donald Trump, attended a pro-life demonstration on the Mall in Washington, D.C. in front of thousands of pro-life supporters. Mr. Trump said the following. We're here for a very simple reason, to defend the right of every child, born and unborn, to fulfill their God-given potential. All of us here today understand an eternal truth Every child is a precious and sacred gift from God. Together, we must protect, cherish, and defend the dignity and the sanctity of every human life. When we see the image of a baby in the womb, we glimpse the majesty of God's creation. When we hold a newborn in our arms, we know the endless love that each child brings to a family. When we watch a child grow, we see the splendor that radiates from each human soul. And as the Bible tells us, each person is wonderfully made. So what the president said is that human life, human life, is made in the image of Almighty God as well as wonderfully made. That is all true. Notice Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, brethren, please notice especially all of you, all of you too, who promote an alternative lifestyles. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now let me ask, why in the image of God and what does it mean in his likeness? We know the form and shape of man, that is the image, the likeness, the form and the shape of God. In various parts of the Bible, it is revealed that God has a face, nose, eyes, a mouth, ears. He has hair on his head, like well, God has, but most, some of us don't. It is revealed God has arms and legs. He has hands and fingers. No animal, fowl, bird, fish, insect, or any other kind of life we know of has hands like human hands. Even any other living being of which we know had a mind to think without hands and fingers. He could not design and make things as man does. God has feet and toes and a body. God has a mind. Animals have brains, but no mind power like man's. Please view our video, The Spirit in Man. If you know what a man looks like, you know what is the form and shape of God. For he made man in his image, after his very likeness. Now one of Jesus' disciples asked him what God the Father looks like. Jesus replied in John chapter 14 verse 9. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet you have you have asked me, and you don't know me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And you say, then, show us the Father? Jesus looked like the Father. Jesus was actually God with us. Notice Matthew 1, verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth the Son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Jesus was the begotten and born Son of God. And what was Jesus' appearance? It was not that of a, is it not that of a human man? 
for he also was the son of man. He looked like so much like any other Jewish men of his day. So much so that his enemies bribed Judas to point him out and identify who in a crowd at night. So now we know God is the same form and shape as a man. However, God is composed of spirit, not of matter as man is. Spirit is invisible to human eyes unless manifested, of course, by some special process. Now, let me again say something controversial. The great Father God is in the process of producing a family of God beings from humans. Are you shocked? Is that blasphemous? Philosophers think of human, the human worth as of supreme value in itself alone. They speak of human dignity. They speak of the innate God powers within each human. They advocate self-confidence, self-glorification. They make mortal man to think of himself as immortal God. Much to the contrary, the sole value of human life lies in the human spirit. The potential of being begotten of God Later to be born very God, a child in the God family. Man is not God within himself, but only mortal flesh and blood with brain power, with intellect, by the human spirit. It takes the impregnation of the Holy Spirit into the human spirit to start the process of conversion and to becoming a son or daughter of Almighty God. Just like when the human spirit enters the human embryo at conception and that is when life begins once the male sperm enters it is the spirit that must enter into us upon conversion to be united with the holy spirit our spirit and the human spirit the holy spirit the creator god impregnating that human spirit with God life as a child of the living God. It, it's like in the state of gestation, though as yet unborn. So to destroy an embryo or fetus in a mother's uterus is to murder a potential future God being. Let me say it again. We already, though yet unborn, the begotten children of God. And by direct comparison, the impregnated embryo or fetus in a mother-to-be's womb is already the child of its parents, though not yet born. Therefore, I remark, abortion is murder. There is no God-given right, law or legislation by God given to any man to refuse life to a yet unborn human. I will continue this controversial subject in our next video. So this is Michael Venny standing for the truth in this 21st century, the 21st century work of Jesus Christ saying, please go to our website and read the truth. Goodbye brethren and goodbye friends.